Hallelujah. Such an honor to be a part of this ministry and be in the presence of his called. Hallelujah. That's what makes this great. I know just growing a ministry, um, there were some specific dynamics in which myself and the Lord conversated about. <laughs> specific things. And and, and I've, I've always been a coach. And and he what he has allowed is for the ministry to be literally a training center. A place where where his chosen can come and and get restored, um, taught, um, and be able to be launched back um, onto the battlefield. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And and that's 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 the role that he's given me. Hallelujah. That place. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. And I've embraced it. I like it. We had a great time in, in, in revival down in Vast this past week. Um, a wonderful time in the Word. The um, Spirit of God showed up, made deposits, and, and, and it's still abiding. Hallelujah. In the hearts of the people and, and even in the atmosphere. God is doing some wonderful things. And if we would open our hearts and minds up to his movement, then we'll see some things. If you're looking for the old tradition, then you won't see anything. <laughs> he changes. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on. We're going to go into that in just a second. I better pray before we jump around this, this thing, take off. I can feel the, the, the jet coasting down the runway right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for this opportunity to minister your word, Lord, to do those things you've called me to do. In Jesus' name, I decrease that you may increase, Lord. Have your way in this place, Lord. Plant the spiritual seeds of your word into the hearts of your people, Lord. Water them, Lord, as only you can do. And may we see the, desire, the fruit of your word made manifest in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's changing. When when we say he's changing, I mean, I'm going to make some clarity because the word says Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. We, 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 we may see him as the same yesterday, today, and then forever in spirit because he's eternal. But the package of his movement changes. Hallelujah. The package of his movement changes. So we'll see. And I have great expectation for some for some wonderful things to occur and not just in my life but in your life because I cherish who he's given me to pour into. Amen. Hallelujah. These relationships that I come across these are relationships that are tied together. I believe I'll see you on, see you on the other side. Amen. This isn't just a walk in the, in the world. I believe he's given me relationships even those that are watching who are not here that desire to be here. Hallelujah. I believe these relationships are, are of eternal nature. That's right. Hallelujah. But God is changing. He's changed. He doesn't change in who he is, but he changed in his methods of operation. So in, in, the, in the early dispensations of his movement, then we'll see, we'll see God raise up Abraham. We'll see, we'll see him out there and 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 these supernatural things occur out of nowhere. We'll, we'll have a Melchizedek. This priest that appears out of nowhere. And, and things are done and um, with, with, with who Melchizedek is in, in that place. We'll, we'll see his character on display when he destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. And all this is in voices and in, and in power at this place. Hallelujah. Then we'll move along and we'll see his power on display when his people are in Egypt and need deliverance. He'll choose a man and he'll we'll see the power of the living God on display and, 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 and he'll manifest himself in these plagues and things of that nature. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These ten plagues occur 
and the people are delivered. There was a, a goal that was there for the deliver, and the goal was the deliverance of his people. Right. Are you with me here? Amen. Then we'll see him move into his prophets for a duration of time. Mm -hmm. You have prophets that are, even a prophet was leading the nation until the nation said we didn't want a prophet anymore. Right. Are you with me here? So he goes from this grand place of exposing himself and showing his power to into these individuals, judges and kings and prophets. And, and, and then we'll see him bring a culmination of everything he is, all of his divine attributes, his divine nature embedded in Jesus Christ. Once again, for the deliverance of his people. You see, God moves in supernatural power for the deliverance of his people. So we see all these miraculous signs, then we see this man, and then he doesn't stop. When Jesus comes, he says, it's expedient that I must go or the comforter will not come. And now we see a fire. Wow. This fire rests upon the people and the masses. And, and now by individual relationship and commitment, there is access to this fire. He gives the fivefold ministry gifts to create the veins of access. You hear what I just said? This is why we're here for, minister. Our job is to develop ourselves so we can create a vein of access for people. You hear that, bro? Uh -huh. You haven't missed anything. Develop yourself to create a vein of access. That's what you hear. It's not, it's not for, you know, ooh, look at me. Oh, I spent time with God, and, and when I spent time with God, I came out. Do you see how I was glowing? No, no, no. Fivefold ministry gifts are here for one reason. To develop a vein of access for God's people. And we can go into Ephesians and look at the specifics of it. But he wants these veins developed. We're like, we're like, like the runaway um, workers that have the combs and say, this way, this way, this way. But we're just, we're just armed. Because <laughs> there's devils out there that want to I want to make sure you, when you call the people this way, this way, this way, you need to put a little firepower inside of you to make sure you can eliminate enemies that would try to say this way, this way. No, no, not that way, this way. Hallelujah. How do we, how we strengthen ourselves is through trials and tribulations. That's it. So we, we as a people have to reverse what the enemy has put in our mind and embrace the trials and tribulations. Because when I count it all joy, are you with me? Then this allows for a release of power that consumes me. I'm a, b before I fill out the rest of that statement, I want to say it again. When I count it all joy, thank you, Lord, for the time I went through the tough places. That's right. Right. That's right. Because if I thank him for those times, then the reward of the spirit enhances the strength of my spirit. Who really wants to go to the gym and lift weights? Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> the goal is not lifting the weights. The goal is to gain the strength from lifting the weights. I don't want to go. If I can snap my finger and, hey, and look better than this, right, baby? <laughs> I don't know. I think I topped out. Ain't that right, baby? I topped out. I don't need to go to the gym. Ain't that right, baby? <laughs> 
We don't really want to go to the gym, our pastor. We just really want the results. We don't really want to go through trials and tribulations. We want the results. And if I can enhance that, if I can take those times to say, Lord, I have a memory of when I went to the gym and I was in superior strength and condition for myself. You know, there's always somebody stronger. It's just, that's just the rule. <laughs> if you got a record, somebody's going to break it. You know, the Guinness Book of World Records is constantly being broken by somebody who's pursuing to break a record. Are right. oh, you with me here? So there's always going to be somebody stronger. So if I can take those, those challenges I've been through and appropriate them in the right vein, then I can gain the strength from those places of trials and tribulations to be able to help bring the people to God. Are you with me here? That's why I'm stronger. I build a bit. I, I may have started off as a little bridge, but they came and the trials broke the rails off the bridge. Oh, mm. the trials ripped the screws out. I got some holes inside of me. Took off some things that I thought was nice. My bridge has some flowers going across of it. They dug all the flowers up. And then start taking out some vital pieces to where I didn't even look like a bridge. And the only thing I was left with was a skeleton structure. And then these construction, these spiritual construction workers came and, and they laid a piece of wood that was two or three times longer than the one I had. And I'm like, ah, that hurt, but man, that 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 show looked pretty good. <laughs> And then they laid another piece of wood, and another piece of wood, another piece of wood. And by the time they're done, my my three foot bridge that one person could cross is now thirty feet wide. Hallelujah! And more people can cross, but I endured it. Are yeah. oh, you with me? Because I'm not here. Gifts. If you hear me out there. You need to hear me well. I'm not here to be a pretty bridge. Right. I'm here to keep expanding that more people can cross. Amen. That's, good. That's it. That's, good. That's why I'm here. Expanding the moment that I think it's about me. That's right. <laughs> that I can prophesy with the best of the prophets. <laughs> <laughs> The moment I think it's about me, I'm lost. Yep. Come on. That's right. The moment <laughs> that the what was that the one animal that Jesus rode in there on? A goat? A donkey. A donkey. <laughs> donkey said, look at me. That <laughs> 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 donkey said, look at me. <laughs> 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 The master can't get there without me. Look at them laying them palm branches down in front of me. My hoofs ain't getting dirty. Look at my gated hoofs. Yours are a little dirty, but my gated hoofs don't even have to touch the dirt. Look at me. Ah! Oh my goodness. <laughs> master kept me to the side. I, I was chained up for a while, then I was chose by the master, sent two servants to come get me. Hallelujah. I didn't have to hang out with the rest of the donkeys. You were where I was at. I didn't hang with y'all dirty donkeys. Ah, he raised me up different. Good analogy. <laughs> Walking down, I got the crowd cheering for me. Look at me. Ah, waving their hands. Woo, look at the anointed on that donkey. Woo, ah, good God Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. You poets and prophets left the pastors. Y'all left that anointing up here. I'm just walking in it right now. Telling them stories. Hallelujah. It's still there. Hallelujah. 
donkey saying, look at me. Better stop. <laughs> well, I wonder what he was saying when Jesus got off of him. <laughs> I wonder what he was saying when they put that rope on his neck. When Jesus got off and they led him back to the back. <laughs> we are here. And we exist to connect people to the master. All of the glory, the songs, the poetry, the anointings, the healings are to connect people to the master. The prophecies, the exhortations, the roars draw attention to say this way. To connect people to the master. Hallelujah. And the prophet got a hold of that. The apostle got a hold of that. Peter. We look at Peter's life and Peter was zealous. Man, Peter had it. But Peter walked with the Lord enough that the Lord could transform himself right in front of Peter. Had a spiritual experience. And you know what happened when you as a gift have a spiritual experience of that magnitude? You know what happens? You want to start a church. <laughs> That's what Peter did, prophet. <laughs> Peter, 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 that boy, he saw Jesus. He saw Moses. He saw Elijah. He said, man, we're going to build a church right here. That's what he did. He wanted to start a church. Want to build a build build a church, but that's not that wasn't God's intent. Amen. Jesus. Peter was was represent an attribute that uh, if the church would have today, we we'd be a little more tighter. Peter, you get the wrong person come before the master with Peter. Peter cut your ear off. Right. Huh. And I and I promise you, of a certainty, he wasn't aiming for the ear. I think that joke is just ducked. Yeah, that's right. Side swipe. <laughs> Side swipe is in. If we had some some Peters today, evangelist, we'd be a lot tighter. But God is raising up individuals that would stay the course to go through the development. That would stay the course to go through the development. I didn't say half church, did I? I said, stay the course to go through the development. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus is the head of the church, but the church is his body. And the church is here for one reason. You know what the church is here for? To connect people to the master. Right. Yeah. Remember me here. That's why we're here. Connect us to the master. Peter, look at 2 Peter. Peter got a revelation of this. Yeah, he got a revelation of it. I'm going to share it with you. 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to look at a few verses. Simon Peter, put your name there. Apostle Jeff. Hallelujah. Jeffrey Cook. A servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't that who you are? A servant of Jesus Christ. Watch this. He, 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 want, he wants us to identify who he's writing to, prophet. He says, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Obtained a faith of equal standing with ours. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep on going here. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace, the power, the anointing, and favor of God. May that and a peace, you know, peace that surpasses all your understanding. So may the power, anointing, and favor of God be multiplied to you Pass your understanding. Are you with me here? Grace and peace. Watch this. He's bringing some direction to 
the power anointing in favor. It is here for, he says to you, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This is what it's for. This is this is this is this is the direction in which he wants you to gain and how to attain this power anointing and favor that we call grace. In the knowledge of God. What does knowledge exist at in our bodies? In our what minister? In our minds. Wouldn't it be kind of expecting that the enemy would war against our minds? The apostle is saying, hey, you need, I, I'm praying that this is there. Now watch, now this is why. In the knowledge, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Watch this, verse 3. Watch this. His divine power, not just any kind of power, his divine power has granted to us, watch this, all things that pertain to life and godliness. I'm going to say it again. This power, anointing, and favor that we gain through knowledge, right? For God has given us a spirit of power, right? We gain this through knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it would behoove me right now to want to learn of him. Before I even go any farther, then I need to establish a time that I know who he is. This is why God set a physical example of this when he moved the people to the promised land. He was letting them know before you get to the promised land, your energy and your sustenance has to come from this manner. So when you are not eating this manna, this word, then you're not going to possess the energy and sustenance by the time you get to the promised land to even take it. Because there's war. There's spiritual war. When we look at this thing from an eagle eye perspective, prophets, and we go back in the dispensation of time, and those that have the eyes to see, we can look down and see Melchizedek on the field. We can see Abraham on the field. We can see the king of Sodom and Gomorrah on the field who don't care nothing about the money. All he want is the people. Do you hear what I just said? Yep. And God raised us up to be people to lead people. Right. Man, Abraham, you can have all this stuff. Just give me the people. There's a priest there. I don't care. Just give me the people. This is why we have to gain the knowledge. The knowledge. The knowledge. Hallelujah. And when the words that he speak that are spirit and our life are inside of us, then people will be drawn to you. They'll be drawn to you. Keep on going here. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, I want us to identify a trick of the enemy right here because when the world teaches this to fake people, fake pastors, fake preachers, they start taking and quoting all things. I'm telling you all things that pertain to life. He said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. All things that pertain to him. So the acquisition of things needs to come down the knowledge that I have that pertains to him. Right. Y'all been getting here, that's a That's a place to sound like shouting hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on. I've attained the knowledge that pertains to him. Yeah. Now this divine power is upon me. And so now my perspective has shifted to, Lord, 
I need a bigger house. Not for my glory. Because he's already said, if you delight yourself in me, I'll give you your heart's desire. So what am I doing? I'm delighting myself in you, Lord. I'm seeking you. I'm going, I'm, I'm burying myself in you. I'm crucified with you. I'm so much wanting to be you that I'll get up on the cross with you. See, this is when it's real. I want to look like you. If you crucified, I won't be crucified. When we do it that way, I'm trying to put something inside of you. Then now all things that pertain to life, your needs are surrounded by, I have this desire, Lord, to bring more people to you. I'm going to start with my family. So, Lord, I want a bigger home. I'm going to teach my kid to hunt. I want some acres, Lord. Teach them how to defend and provide for themselves. Teach them how to fish. So this world won't be their source, but by what I've trained them to be, they can prosper. Are you with me here? I need funds, Lord, to make this purchase unless you provide someone to give it to me, Lord, however you tell me. See, now I'm awaiting instructions. And I don't become... Isolated in the ideology of the world and the winds that it blows because this world blows winds that say, look this way. Do it this way. But I need this divine power he has granted to all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through, watch this, through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. It's through the knowledge of him. This divine power is through the knowledge of him. This divine power. So if I'm not spending time with him, if I'm not wanting to ingest the manna, see, in order, in order, this is what God is showing us, that in order to go get the manna, you have to get up Put yourself a satchel on your shoulder. Go out and bend down, pick it up, put it in the bag, walk back to the place, and prepare it into whatever meal that you're going to use with it. That's called work. <laughs> I got to put in the work, minister. So I look out there, and this is what the church does. Not this church, of course. They look out, they come to the edge of the tent and say, all oh, this manna out there, you really want me, Lord, to have to go get it? I got some yesterday. <laughs> hey, it's just all around. I'm not going to get it because I went and got it yesterday. But we got to go get it. This is that one place that I can't control. I can't control the hunger and the thirst. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he said, for those who do, they shall be filled. That's the one thing I can't control. If you reach out of the tent and grab one man, one little flake of man, and that's all you got, that's what you got. But if you're looking over here and I done, this man or somehow or another, I got a, I done got me a couple of rocks, minister. And I done got made me a grinder. I'm grinding up manna. And, and he done gave me some wisdom on how to take this manna powder and make some make some tortillas. <laughs> hey! Hey! And he done showed me that all the herbs and I done went and made some ranch. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! All off the land. I'm making some stuff and and you got your little manna chip over there and say, well, <laughs> well, God says, hey, this is a process. This is a process. This is why he says now the seed is the word. He didn't say the tree. He says it's a seed because he wants us to recognize it's a process. I got to plant a seed. Are you with me here? I got to go get the manna. 
I gotta go get the manna. I gotta go get the manna. I gotta go get the manna. I gotta go get the word. I gotta go get the word. I gotta go get the word. I've got to want to acquire knowledge on how to utilize this word. I gotta go get it. Maybe I go walk over to Minister's Christ here looking at them. Hey, you made that with the man of good God. I mean, are you with me? I gotta, I gotta want to acquire the knowledge on how to use it. It has divine power. Hmm. But we get it through the knowledge of him. Watch this. Let's keep on going. Because this is what Peter was trying. Peter wants us to know this. Verse 4. I'm in the English Standard Version, by the way. It says, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that the grace and peace that motivates me mm -hmm, or moves me to want to gain the knowledge of God that's through Jesus Christ and has divine power in verse 3 for all things that pertain to life and godliness. You mean to tell me by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises? So if I don't eat the manna, if I don't pursue the knowledge of him through his word, are you with me here? Mm -hmm. I don't get, watch this, the divine power. And without the divine power, Come on. I don't get granted his precious and very great promises so that watch this, Peter wanted to make it plain for his prophet, he said through them you may become partakers of the divine nature you mean to tell me that as I acquire this that my very nature begins to change yes that's a Moses. <laughs> Moses went away. He went 40 days of school. <laughs> he went to 40 days of school. We thought we thought school system was wrong when they, when they gave us the free lunch. <laughs> Moses went with Jesus for 40 days. And he had to pay for no meal. Come on. He didn't get hungry. No. He fasted. He fasted according to what the world has to offer. But I promise you, he ate. Y'all didn't hear what I just come said. On, come on. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. He fasted from this stuff on this world that would die. But how can you eat something that's everlasting? So God in his power and his presence. I'm giving you some spiritual stuff here. Moses is there with God and he's breathing the breath of life. He can't feed Moses what he has there for those 40 days. Y'all better go with me. The spirit is here. He can't give Moses that food because if he gives Moses that food, then Moses lives forever. Ah, there you go. Boy, y'all didn't hear me. Oh, there was a tree of life in the garden. There was one. If you ate from that one, you live forever. That's why the angels showed up real quick. When them jokers, when them guys, them jokers, when Adam and Eve seeing them angels came down, we're going to guard this because if they eat this and that, we in some trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you, you with me now. So Moses is up there with the Lord. And what's sustaining Moses for 40 days is divine power. What we hear is the, you know, Moses fasted for 40 days. Yeah, he did. Because he couldn't bring that dead stuff in the presence of God. I don't hear that say it. Because God is life. If he have bought dead stuff in the presence of God, the plants that he would would have he bought. Come on. If he would have ate of that. Y'all don't hear me. Come on. You don't even hear what I'm saying. See, there was an olive branch in the ark, and the olive branch had olives on it. Oh. That's why anybody couldn't touch it. You didn't have access to that. You can't. One man, one time. 
you crack that thing over, eat those olives that are growing. God grew those olives. Those are eternal. Oh, this is heavy, but it's good. So Moses in his presence, he can't eat anything. God ain't going to allow it because if he does, that sinful package goes back down to earth and it lives forever. So God sustains him with divine power. So much power that's there that Moses comes down the mountain glowing. And how do we know that he's walked away from the presence of God? Because over a course of time, the power, the glow subsides. Right. Oh, boy, y'all didn't hear me. Jesus. His spirit being was ingesting this kind of power. Hmm. Wow. This is what God wants you to have access to. This kind of power. And he's going to give it to you today. He's going to tell you how to do it. Because Peter said, you know what? I got to tell them something. Because this changed me. Because even in my defense of who Jesus was, when, when, when things got tough, I ran away from Jesus. Oh, y'all about to hear me? Okay, I'm going to take that letter, minister. I'm going to peel back the onion prophet. I'm going to peel back one more layer. When things got tough, I ran away from the word. When things got tough, I stopped reading the word. Mm -hmm. That's right. When I, when I was in front of a flame, a fire that represents the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. There's a devil that manifests itself that wants to destroy me. Thank you. Oh God, the Holy Spirit is here. He's talking spirit. And that devil shows up on the other side of the fire because it knows I've got to get Peter to confess that I don't even know who Jesus is. I got to get him to say it, minister. Right there in the presence of the flame. Oh, you with me, prophet, now. Right in the presence of a flame. It's Aren't you one of those? That devil is on the on a mission, and we just read in stories because we don't we're not spiritual, but we spiritual here in Jesus' name. Jesus. That devil walking around the flame, saying, "Peter, <coughs> wasn't you with Jesus? No, I don't even know who he is." Look at that confession in front of the Lord. Mm. Look at the confession. Hey, yes, you were, aren't you? No, no, no. ah. Look at that confession. To eventually, Peter curse, cusses, right there in the presence of the living God. Because fire is supernatural. Oh, yeah. Mm. Cock crows. Just like the Lord said he would. And he's done. Peter is so done. The divine power has been so depleted. Depleted. That he goes back to fishing. Oh, Boy, y'all didn't hear. No. Oh, wow. Okay. He goes back to the very place in which Jesus found him. Watch this, prophet. Y'all don't you better hear me because the Lord is here. He's with me today. <coughs> I profess he always, he's in this place today for you. Amen. He goes back to the very place that wasn't working for him. Mm. He didn't have no fish in the boat. Come on. <laughs> when the Lord showed up, he didn't have no fish in the boat. Nothing. It wasn't working for him. Been out there all day and all night, and it wasn't working for him. Insanity. <laughs> Insanity. The Lord shows up, gives him a word, and that what that which wasn't working now starts working. This is the Peter we're talking about that wrote this right here. He wants us to say, "Hey, you ain't got to go through this, because what's going to happen?" 
is when you off, let me tell you where you're going. You're going back to the place that you're familiar with. Right. You know that place that wasn't working. Yeah. Once your confession changes, once your language gets to be the language that denounces Jesus, yeah. you're going back. Right. And you're going to have to meet Jesus there all over again. Yeah. Wow. Have to meet him again. But this time, the Lord doesn't show up with the multitude of fish in the boat. He shows up with some fish cooking on the coast. <laughs> and Peter shows up just like he was supposed to, but naked with no clothes on. Right. <laughs> Nothing to hear the master again. <laughs> reassert wow. the command that wow. we talked about at the beginning of this message feed my people yes, Lord Jesus. thank you Lord yes Lord Jesus mm. yes Lord thank Jesus you. Thank you. Reconnect, me. reconnect me thank you Lord reconnect me reconnect me reconnect me yes. reconnect me Lord yes. reconnect me reconnect me God said if you repent I'll reconnect you Right now, Lord, I repent. Hallelujah. Do it with me. Lord, I repent. Hallelujah. This is this is the this is a covering right now that God said, I'm gonna let him do it right now. Apostle, do it for him right now. Lord, I repent of everything that I've ever done that caused a separation between me and the glory that I once experienced with you, Lord. Oh God, forgive me for running away, Lord. Forgive me for the confessions that I made. Forgive me, Lord. Clean me. Wash me over again. Ah. Ah. So Peter gets fed these miracle fish. Oh boy, the fish gets the fish are miraculous. You know, it's the same meal that he fed the people. Ah. He gets to eat that which he's going to give to the people. He fills them up, Pastor, with that which he has for the people. Me and Jesus, right there. Jesus touched the fist just like he did with the people. He fills them up with it. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a good God. He said, Peter, if you meet me, if you meet me again, don't have none of that stuff on. I don't even want the garments that you're wearing. None of that stuff you went back to. This is why some of you need to clean closets out. I don't want none of that stuff you did, that you was wearing while you was gone with that time you separated yourself with me. You come back butt naked and you repent right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Ah, Jesus is good. Mm. Verse 4. Partakers of the divine nature. How? I put down how in red. Having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Mm -hmm. He's got the divine power And that's what it do It'll break you away from it Peter went back to that Which he, it wasn't even working for him He should have went back to selling real estate <laughs> Maybe selling cars Something He went back to what wasn't working for him He went back to the place where he needed Jesus The first time <laughs> Hey Hallelujah. But God's grace. That's why I started this thing off in verse 2. May grace and peace be multiplied. God's grace was there. Now this is how we get it right now. You thought, you thought that was good. This is how we get it, prophet. This is how we get it, minister. You thought what we said so far was good. Peter was so in love with God. So in love with God. That in his writings... You're going to see right here a love that says, I got to make sure that they don't experience what I experienced. Right. Mm. Amen. This is how we get it right here. If you got to stay in, stand. You got to get a swallow of water, get it, you get it. You don't want to miss this. This is how you do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Verse 5. For this very reason, comma, make every, some of them, right? Every. A piece of them. Every. A little bit of them. Every effort to supplement your faith. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought the church told me all I needed was faith. There's a devil outside the door waiting to take your words. And he knows there's some more stuff you need to hold on to it besides you just reading with your eyes. He says, make every effort to supplement your faith. Oh, boy. Let's find out what happens. Now, this is, this is the list. Supplement your faith. This means when I get this faith, I got to make every effort to walk in virtue. Are you with me? Watch what he does here. Because he creates a chain that keeps you in this divine power. You didn't hear what I just said. He don't just give you a list to follow. Peter builds a chain. And he says, this is how you will not fall. I'm going to give you every link of the chain. This is not a list. This is a chain. Thank you, Lord. He said for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. And I gave you the definition of it. I'm going to give it to you right now. Virtue is behaving or showing high moral standards. Make every effort to make sure that you're behaving and showing high moral standards. Because there's a devil that's out there walking around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you're not showing them, this is a pawn on the chess table. If you're not showing high moral standards, then that lion, that roaring lion called the devil is going to be staying there studying just to see if you are available to be devoured. Oh. Now, look, watch what Peter does here. He says, supplement your faith with virtue. And then he makes a link to the virtue. Right. He says, and virtue with knowledge. Did you, hear, did you see what he's doing here? Yes. No. He said, you got some faith. Make sure you have this in place. And then along with this, this that you have in place, if this towel that I have represents this, this, you need something tied to the towel that's tied to me. Come on. You need something tied to the towel that's tied to me. He says, and virtue with knowledge. Now, knowledge is Facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says somebody needs to go up there and find the time stamp because somebody's desiring. They're going to say, I want to see this again. And this way you can announce the time stamp of where this, this listing starts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody write it down. What we got on the message right now? Hallelujah. Uh, one five six oh nine. So one a bit further, but behind. So. Five six oh nine. What is it? Say it in time. One hour and fifty six minutes. Okay, one hour and fifty six minutes. So that person that's desiring that needs to. I think somebody's going to go to work. Matter of fact, they work. But the Holy Spirit is here. Hallelujah. They've been on it five minutes. Their lunch break is about to be over. Hallelujah. Boy, the Holy Spirit is here. One hour and start at one hour and 50 minutes. Okay. One hour and 50 minutes until this message, this list comes available. Hallelujah. Somebody can tell me you heard me, Apostle. That, that was kind of Hallelujah. spiritual all by itself, jumping that interruption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, Your faith with virtue. And you then your virtue. I got faith. I got a word, evangelist. And with the word, what's tied to my word is my virtue. I got moral standards, right? 
So if I'm battling that area, I need to get that fixed because my chain is linking. My chain is weak. You know, now we, bro we rode bicycles coming up, and you know, if your chain broke and you was a dirty dog, which some of us were, in order to go steal somebody else's chain, you had to find the master link on the chain right. with a screwdriver and a hammer. Knock yeah. the master link off, the chain come off, you take that chain. Ain't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that right, Minister? That's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. <laughs> now they can't tell them, but you can. <laughs> and you find the master link, knock it off. Well, we we talking right now. We we, we these are the masters links. Hallelujah. Yeah. Faith to tied to virtue. Virtue on the virtue is tied to knowledge. Are you with me here? And knowledge with self control. So I got faith. Then I got virtue. Right. I'm supplementing my faith here. And with my virtue. I've got knowledge tied to this towel. So I would need another piece to, if you see this towel, then um, now I've got knowledge towel tied to this towel. Are you with me here? And now from knowledge, I've now I've got, hallelujah, self-control. Mm. Right, but the order, the order, hey, the self-control. Mm -hmm. Self-control. Mm -hmm. The ability to control oneself. In particular, one's emotions and desires or the expression of them in one's behavior, especially in difficult situations. Come on. Peter said they got to get this because I was in a difficult situation. My master was gone. They had already started beating them. And I'm witnessing what they're doing to them. And I, I can't take that. I, I thought I could. I thought I was tough. But I can't take this. I can't take this. So the enemy brings them before the fire. Just warm himself up. And that's a little person that's there. An agitator. You know how an agitator agitates the fire. An agitator. And by the end of the agitation, Peter goes off, cusses. Oh, I know you. I got some saints out there that said, I'm going to cuss somebody out. They come my way. But where that cuss come from? Mm -hmm. I thought the poet said it when you had to be dead. <laughs> I used to detail cards to a funeral agency, and I saw a lot of bodies. And I can promise you, they didn't do anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> They just laid there, minister. Those bodies that I saw in there, there, them caskets, they didn't do it. I could have cussed them. I could have smacked them. <laughs> and I promise that dead body would smack me back. <laughs> yeah. Promise you. Hallelujah. He says, we need this information, the skills acquired by a person um, but with this knowledge, these skills, hallelujah. And we, from that knowledge, we need self-control. And from the self, what's tied to the self-control, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to make a little chain up here. <laughs> Let me put a little marker up there. It'll stay. I'll leave it right there. That green marker is touching now the self-control. So now I got faith. And for faith, I got virtue. And now I got virtue. I got knowledge tied to my virtue. And from my knowledge tied to my virtue, I got this oil of self-control. This means I got my emotions under the control. I ain't going off on everybody. Are you with me here? Amen. And from this self-control, hallelujah, my ability to be able to control them, I've got steadfastness. Hallelujah. Knowledge with virtue. Knowledge, self-control, steadfastness. Steadfastness is a steadfastness is a firm in belief, determination, and adherence. Steadfastness says, I don't care what it looked like, I'm taking my stand right here. Are you with me here? 
and then to steadfastness. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll put this right here. We can touch that. We're making a chain. Hallelujah. To steadfastness, we got godliness. Now, this is the stuff that supplements my faith. You know, the word. Faith come about hearing and hearing by the word. The faith. They you know the faith without works is dead. This is how I supplement it right here. And, and, and steadfastness with godliness. The quality or practice of, watch this, confirming to the laws and wishes of God. Everybody say obedience. Obedience. Mm -hmm. Devoutness and moral uprightness. Hallelujah. These are some things that would supplement my faith and keep on going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When, I, when, when, when we talk about a supplement, a supplement is something that completes or enhances something. Mm -hmm. Something that completes or enhances something else when added to it. Amen. Completes or enhances something when added to it. Peter said, you're going to need this. Yeah. You're going to need this. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't hear the author. He's pleading his case. Yeah. You know what Peter's saying? Peter's saying, look, he said, Minister Chris, I walked on water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Prophet, this man's pleading with us, saying, look, I walked on water. That's right. That's right. You better hear me. My boat was empty. I cast out a net. He filled it up. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. You better hear me. I went to prayer with Jesus. I saw Moses and Elijah. This is the man that's saying this. Come on. That's good. I had all these experiences. As a matter of fact, Jesus told me that the Father shared a word with me. Thank you. And when I got to a tough place, there was something with all those experiences. Oh God, help us to understand how much we really need you. There was something, Evangelist, with all those experiences, Pastor, that broke my confession. And didn't just break it, minister. Broke it in front of the flame. Hallelujah. This is who's writing this. This is who's telling us what we need. Hallelujah. From steadfastness to godliness. From godliness to, I'm not going to use a marker here. Hallelujah. Brotherly affection. Hallelujah. He's saying you're going to need all this. And brotherly affection is, watch this. Man, I love this right here. I love this to my brothers in here because, you know, my sisters too, but I ain't my brothers too. It says, brother is more than blood brothers. Brotherly is more than blood brothers. It's that camaraderie you get when two or more of you are walking the same path of life together. Oh, yeah. Same path. He said, you better make sure you have your brotherly love connected to your godliness. Because at this place, you're real close to the master. You're real close. You're real close. But there's one more piece he says you need. He says you need love. Watch this. An intense feeling of deep affection. You need that love that Pastor talked about it for his wife earlier. Hallelujah. Intense feeling of deep affection. I love you, babe. Ah, hallelujah. An ability to endure something, go through something, hang in there. 
and still show back up at the beach with the fish. <laughs> After you don't walk on water. After you broke bread with the master. After you went to the Mount of Transfiguration and you seen some spirits, some angels. Hallelujah. After even Jesus told you who it was that's going to betray him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need that love. Now, as we wrap this up in this last verse, this chain is built from my faith to the master. You know what I'm saying? I've got a word. This word and I'm that gives me life. I can't do this on my own. I got to have the life of the word operating inside of me. This is worth me clocking in for. Amen. Spending eight hours to get a paycheck. It's worth me having some kind of similitude. I got this work that I'm doing. This brings up this faith. And from this faith, I've got these supplements that connect this word to my master. This way I can do a self-examination. Oh, I got some relatives' house. I can't go over there because they don't like me. I don't like, like them. So, hey, you just stay over there. I just stay over here. <laughs> so I said, Pastor, what we do? Reach over there in prayer. Oh, reach in prayer. Genuine prayer. Real love. Real love. How could this man walk with me for three years? And I take him to the secret place to show him who I really am. He sees Moses and Elijah. They don't have Google Photos. It's divine power that's in operation for him to even recognize who Moses and Elijah is. Amen. Amen. Superior knowledge in operation. We walk together. He defends me when the soldiers come up. Yet in the toughest places, he denied me three times. Not one time, prophet. One time would have been enough. <sighs> Lord, help us. Not one time. One time would have been enough, Pastor. Two times. If my wife hear me say, and I'm on the outside of the store, and she hear me say one time, Angela Cook ain't my wife. <laughs> one time would have been enough. But she stands at the door and hear me say two times. I'm trying to tell you I don't got nothing to do with her. No, no, no. One more time. Because I want to talk about covenant here in these few words. And then by the third time, she hears me cuss about it. And then she comes back home and make me some Jamaican beef <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. so. Meet me at the oven with some Jamaican beef fatties after I have denied her three times. Somebody <laughs> 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 said, that's poison. But I eat that. But I eat that. <laughs> she says, honey. Oh, <laughs> While I be eat that, honey, she says, honey. Oh, you know, I was standing at the door when you was outside talking. <laughs> 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 Are these good? Yeah, they, yeah, they good. Three convictions. Three times. Three times, honey. Three times. He sees the face of the master. Three times. Then he just go and all he can do is weep. He's, he's so broken. This is that man. He said, I'm telling you, I walk with faith. I walk with the word. It was inside of me. I had some spiritual attributes operating. I walked on water. When some even wouldn't, I took the chance. I stepped out there. The master touched me, pulled me back, and I walked back on water to the boat with the master. And I'm telling you, you're going to need this. You're going to need this. You're going to need this. 
As we conclude, he says in verse 8, he says, for if these qualities, for, for if, for if, for if, for if, for if, for if, 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 they may or may not, if, if, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, watch this right here. They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Do you see the cycle here? Yeah. Wow. The cycle starts with <laughs> grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our God and of Jesus our Lord. So everything is contained in this cycle. Wow. So it would behoove me that I would go home and examine this. And make sure that my life is filtered through this. Amen. And then I'll see the power of God operating in my life. He said, Peter said, this is the same man that denied him three times. He says, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing. And they keep you from being ineffective. Mm -hmm. they, excuse me, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful. Woo! In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read verse 9, but we don't have to. Yeah. I don't have to, but I'm going to read it. For, for whoever lacks these qualities mm. is so nearsighted mm. that he is blind, mm. having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you know you don't want to. You don't. You don't want to read that. You don't. You don't want to be reading the rest of that. Yes, read. You will never fall. If you get a word, you develop that word, you study that word, and you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Spoken from the man that has the biggest fall exposed. Yeah. His fall was so big it made it into the Bible. <laughs> Peter said, they didn't have to tell me. They didn't have to tell it about me. It's in the Bible. Everybody know what you did, Peter. Amen. Hallelujah. The whole world knows that you denied him three times. After all that. Hallelujah. But if we practice these, we'll never fall. Stand at your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's good. He's so good that he would open up. He would open up this for us. He opened it up for us. He opens it up for us. He says, I know that these individuals, they, they love me. They've got some faith, some word that's stirring inside of them. They won't never renounce me. They love me. Let me show them how to ensure this connection so that they faith in which they operate by, they can re re they can get the re reciprocity of their actions. Hallelujah. Because God says, I'm not mocked. That's right. And whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's right. So the Lord wants us to have the reciprocity of these actions operate in our life, supplementing this faith in which we operate by. Hallelujah. That last connection, love. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> love. <laughs> love. That last connection. You can't operate by the last connection if I don't have brotherly affection. Because the love is not connected to the virtue. It's connected to the brotherly affection. <laughs> Come on, 
And you can't have brotherly affection if you don't have godliness. Because the godliness, hallelujah, is connected to the brotherly affection, which is connected to the love, which is connected to God, because God is And if you don't have no self-control, you can't have steadfastness. Because self-control is connected to steadfastness. Steadfastness is connected to godliness. Godliness is connected to brotherly affection. And the brotherly affection is connected to love that's connected to Christ. <laughs> I'm not going to say the rest of these things. <laughs> what I'm going to say is you better have this list and you better have it in your bosom. Because don't tell me if you love me. You don't even want to hang out with me. <laughs> don't tell me you love me when I, there's nothing about you that's godly. <laughs> don't tell me you love me when, when you don't have no self-control. Nothing about you is controllable. Don't tell me that you love me when you've pursued no knowledge. Right. Not knowledge of the world, knowledge that he says is free. Amen. You find it in me and I'll give you some divine power. Don't tell me that you love me if you don't have any virtue. I can't even take you around my people because you can call yourself a Christian. <laughs> and you don't got no standards. <laughs> This is, this is some things that I desire, that I pray you desire. I want to walk beside him. I want, I want, I want him to be in me. I want to live in him. But while this flesh is here, I want him in me. And I can't be connected to him without these attributes, no matter how many Bible verses I can quote. Are you with me? That's right. Are you with me? Amen. Me and my wife had a discussion in the church a couple of days ago, and it was about brotherly affection. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed our hearts. Hallelujah. He blessed our hearts. He said, hey, y'all, this is me right here. This is me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you've spoken to us, to our spirits in this place. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that this word doesn't fall on deaf ears, Lord, but on hearts that are ready to receive. We receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We've already repented. We receive it. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, you said if we'd hunger and thirst after righteousness, we'd be filled. Lord, I'm not going to take for granted, Lord, that I can propel myself down the road to your glory. So I ask by your Holy Spirit that you stir me. Ah, oh, stir me, Lord, to have a hunger and a thirst. For righteousness. I don't want to trust it in my own mind. Let your will be my heart's desire. Hallelujah, Lord. None of me, all of you. Hallelujah, Lord. None of me. All of you. I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding to understand the calls you have in our life. Through this knowledge, Lord, allow us to see the connection 
to the people that you have. And let us desire to fulfill it, Lord. When we stand before you and it's over, we want to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So Lord, reveal your will. Reveal your will that I can pursue it, Lord. To hear these words. I want to pursue it, Lord. Go after it, Lord. Day to day, Lord. Stir me, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Lord. Just like you told Peter when he came back. Lord, you told him to feed my sheep. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God. Give us the instructions, Lord. The directions. We'll follow. In Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to do something before you go. Hallelujah. I think I want to stop it. I think I want this on the air. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stop me yet. I need you to be by, I need you to be by beside your husband.